It's hard to believe they're already halfway through 2023. What's going on guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going through everything I watched in the month of June. That includes all the movies and TV shows that I watched this past month. There were 30 days, I watched a good bit of movies, doing a lot of franchise rewatches actually. And I also watched some TV shows um, that I'll talk about here as well. Before I get into this thing, be sure to hit that like button, comment down below your favorite movie or show that you watched in the month of June. Subscribe to that notification bell to help me reach my goal of 80,000 subscribers. I am so, so close if you're watching this right now. Subscribe, it'll help me reach that goal. It'll be awesome if we could do that. And if you want a companion to this video, check out my Patreon link down below. Your support goes a long way over there. I am going to be doing a tier list ranking of all the new release movies that I saw in June. So if you want extra content, access to the Discord, all that stuff, check out the Patreon link down below. But let's go ahead and dive right into uh, all the things that I watched this past month. So usually I just go to my letterbox for starters. You can follow me at Filmstock over there if you're not already. So on June 1st, I continue my Spider-Man rewatch. I saw Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse again because I saw it in an early screening in May, so I went back for round two. I watched, or I should say, rewatched Far From Home that night, and then I also rewatched Spider-Man No Way Home that night. So that was sort of finishing out my Spider-Man rewatch. Um, solidifying No Way Home is my favorite. Check out my ranking linked up above, or somewhere probably. But I really enjoy all the Spider-Man movies for different reasons. I don't think there is a outright bad Spider-Man movie, which is really impressive, especially because there have been so many different iterations of that character. Um, and then speaking of more Spidey, on June 3rd, I went and saw Spider-Verse a third time in theaters with my buddies because they hadn't seen it. We were all hanging out and we were like, hey, let's just go see this. We went to like a 10.30 a.m. showing. Early morning movies slept on, let me just say that much. But across the Spider-Verse, it rules. And it might be pretty high on my tier list ranking of June 2023 movies. Check out the Patreon for the exact placement of that. But then we move into a one, two, three, four day run of me going to the theater. That is rare if you know me. I don't go that much. So on the third, I rewatched Across the Spider Verse. Well, on June 4th, I got to see Raiders of the Lost Ark on the big screen for the first time ever. This is a top four favorite movie for me. In fact, right now, I'd say it's my favorite. I've watched it like three times this year alone. And I've really been in the Indiana Jones spirit ever since Dial of Destiny was announced. I've been rewatching the movies a bunch. We'll talk about them more later in this video, but Raiders on the big screen was a spectacle. It's honestly the way the movie was meant to be viewed. I was hearing sounds that I had never heard from the film. It was the clearest I'd ever seen the picture, and it was just the most immersive experience I might have had with this film. It was awesome. It was filled with indie fans, the theater was, and I, I honestly hope to see all the Indiana Jones movies on the big screen. I think I'll be able to see Temple of Doom and crusade if they do like anniversary screenings but i've seen three of the five indie films on the big screen so i love that you know i hope to get to see them all eventually but then let's talk about a stinker transformers rise of the beast saw this one june 5th not a good movie i have a full review detailing why i have so many issues with the movie but for starters i i hate to like say this because it's become so cliche to say this but truly this is what i fear an ai written script with human edits would look like Painfully unfunny. The characters are just so uninteresting. Everything was underwhelming. No visual flair. I mean, I could go on and on. I'll spare you. Rise of the Beast stunk, in my opinion. And then on June 6th, I saw The Flash early and was pretty disappointed with that as well. Now, I have really thought about this film for about a month now, talked about it with people, listened to all the discourse online, and I, I, I've come to the conclusion I have way more issues than positives. You know, originally I think I was at a 3 out of 5 for the movie, and I still enjoy Keaton, seeing him back in action. There's a lot of promise early on, but overall this movie is bad. It, it's, it's, it's like a 2, 2.5 out of 5 movie. I have so many issues, and it's going to be a movie that we look back on years from now, and people are going to be like, how was that ever even released? In fact, week 3, it's tracking to, I believe, do less than 10 million domestic. It is one of, if not the biggest, box office bomb in Warner Bros. history, and it's just going to continue to fizzle out until it gets thrown on digital, probably by the end of this month, July. So, The Flash was disastrous. What can you say? I then went to Fan Expo Dallas. I was there, I, if you count travel days, June 8th to the 12th. Um, check out my vlog if you guys haven't already. But on June 8th, on the plane, I watched Pitch Perfect 2. Now, the first Pitch Perfect... Blah, 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 whoa, whoa. Trying to go all acapella on you guys there. The first Pitch Perfect is a movie I watched years ago. Really enjoy that one. I've rewatched it over the years, and then I'd seen parts of two and three with my girlfriend Cam. She loves the movies, and so she was like, let's watch this on the plane. I was like, that's fine. So it was the first time I fully watched Pitch Perfect 2, and 
It introduces Haley Seinfeld. She steals the show for me. I love her character in this franchise and just her as an actress. It was fun. You know, it, it knows what it is. It wasn't as good as the first movie. It's like a three and a half. I really enjoyed it. It made the flight go by fast, had some good laughs, the music was great. Then we watched part three, or Pitch Perfect 3, that night at the hotel. And that's probably my least favorite of the trilogy, but again, it was still fun. It did get a little outlandish with sort of an action side of the franchise being introduced. A little weird, plus some of my favorite supporting characters aren't in this movie, in the third one, so that was a bummer not seeing them there. The weakest of the trilogy, but still enjoyment to be had. Overall, Pitch Perfect is like a trilogy I would totally binge in a day if I wanted to just watch some fun, goofy movies with some pretty great music. Pitch Perfect, solid stuff. Then on the flight home, I watched Miss Congeniality, or should I say rewatched, because I'd seen this movie years ago and I remember it fairly well, but I hadn't seen it in a long time, and this rewatch, like, it, it, this rewatch kicked ass. Like, this this movie's awesome. Sandra Bullock's hilarious in it. It's like a rom-com with this spy action side to it. It's one of my favorite rom-coms now. This rewatch really solidified that for me. And I think we need more movies like this. Um, we don't get, you know, no hard feelings I'll talk about later. It's sort of reminiscent of that where we get a movie that's not taking itself so seriously, like it's comedy first and foremost, but it still tells a great plot. That's what No Hard Feelings is, and that's what I think Miss Congeniality does as well. It has Michael Caine, Sandra Bullock, I believe uh, Benjamin Bratt is one of the actors, like really great cast and a funny movie. I appreciate this one a lot and it's easy to rewatch. Definitely one of those feel good type of movies that I always talk about. But then we get into the Indiana Jones portion of this month. Only 10 days after seeing Raiders on the big screen, I went and saw it again in my own home. <laughs> I rewatched Raiders and then I rewatched Temple of Doom after that. And then the next day I rewatched Crusade, Crystal Skull, and went and saw Dial of Destiny. So in the span of like two days, I watched all five Indiana Jones films and it's easily my favorite action adventure franchise and damn near my favorite movie franchise. Like Star Wars I love, but it has a lot of offensively bad movies. I'm talking to you eight and nine. Indiana Jones doesn't have a movie that like really was offensively bad ever to me. I love the trilogy. Crystal Skull is a lot of fun for me and I dig that one and Dial is the weakest, but I still have enjoyment with it. So Indiana Jones consistently one of my favorite favorite movie franchises out there. I've talked about it a lot lately, so I'll plug right here. Indiana Jones movie ranking, go check that out. I've got a lot of indie content, a character tier list, a bunch of stuff like that. But that trilogy, and even four, capture that Spielberg charm so well, and it, they're just delightful movies. Easy, easy to rewatch, and I had a blast diving back into this franchise. But the next morning, after watching Dial of Destiny, I went and saw Pixar's Elemental, and this was a fine movie. It had some sweet moments, some heartfelt moments, but to me, it didn't really capture anything that I come to know and love from Pixar. Like, it didn't do too much for me. It was fine. Like, I, I'm already sort of forgetting that I watched the movie, though, and that's not what I want. It didn't, like, blow my socks off, which is kind of what I expect from Pixar now. I know that's, like, unrealistic expectations to have for Pixar, but I expect, like, amazing animated movies, and this one was like it was good but it was, it was was it really it's kind of forgettable that's how i feel about elemental i have more thoughts on a review that i posted and then that weekend i watched extraction 2 and i will say this much extraction 2 has a great one take action scene one i mean it was like mind-blowingly good but the rest of the movie's pretty run of the mill and has that straight to streaming feel you know like uh straight to red box straight to streaming where it's like these are just super generic side characters. I liked Chris Hemsworth's charisma as Tyler Rake, but when it comes down to it, I enjoyed that action scene so much that I was able to give this an overall positive score because the movie, there's no way it was gonna top itself after that scene. Like it peaked early. That action scene was from like 25 minute mark to like the 47 minute mark or something like that. So that's the highlight of the movie. After that, it just, it's kind of like, we're just meandering and there's some decent fight scenes, but it never reaches that height again. I would watch Extraction 3 for sure, but it didn't blow me away. It's, it's nothing we haven't seen before after that one take. It's We've seen this before, especially like it's similar to the first Extraction in a way. So talking about action movies, I got on my Mission Impossible rewatch on the 18th as well as I rewatched both Mission Impossible and Mission Impossible 2. I won't say too much because I have a review or not review, a ranking of the series dropping in about two weeks on YouTube. That's going to be up early this week on Patreon. So check that out. If you're interested in seeing my ranking of the seven Mission Impossible films early because I have seen Dead Reckoning Part 1 review coming this week. But Mission Impossible 1, honestly, it amazes me how it's still able to trick me up so much. It's a smart movie. Mission Impossible 2, step down, but it has some wild John Woo action and there are some intense moments even though it might just be the worst of the franchise. And before I continued my Mission Impossible rewatch, we took one day where I watched No Hard Feelings, and what a surprise this movie was. Raunchy already comedy, Jennifer Lawrence fully committing, Andrew Barth Feldman might be his star-making role. It balances the humor and heartfelt moments. There's genuine moments that give me chills. I was like, wow, this is a beautiful scene, but there's moments where I'm laughing out loud. It is exactly what I want from a comedy, where it's not like constant laugh out loud from start to finish. 
it actually tells a pretty compelling story that resonated with me and I didn't think that was possible. So kudos to No Hard Feelings for probably being the surprise movie of the summer. But then on the 21st of June, I rewatched Mission Impossible 3 and Ghost Protocol. Both movies are badass. Philip Seymour Hoffman owns his role as the villain in Mission Impossible 3. Where's the rabbit's foot, Ethan? <laughs> and then in Ghost Protocol, that's when the franchise really skyrockets for me in terms of elevating the action. If you know, you know. And then on the 24th, I rewatched Rogue Nation and Fallout. Rogue Nation's a little more complex. You have to have your ears tuned in or you'll miss some pretty important details. But the more I rewatch this movie, the more I appreciate it. The more I pick up on all the little hints along the way. It has some intense action. It's the beginning of the Macquarie era of MI films. Fallout is the gold standard for this franchise, though. That movie is incredible. Non-stop action. Um, the score is, is, is great, too. I mean, it's such a fantastic action series. Each movie sort of builds and builds and builds. So Mission Impossible Rogue Nation and Fallout are both like a great one-two punch. And uh, I'll talk about Dead Reckoning Part 1 later this week in my review. But then I only watched two more movies in June. I rewatched Dial of Destiny and my, my on second viewing, my thoughts went up a little bit. It's like a 3.25 out of 5 for me. I have a whole spoiler review where I kind of air out my grievances on the final act of the movie. So check that out. It's it's on the channel. I don't know. Dial of Destiny did disappoint me. It had Overall, I think I'm more positive than negative, but over time, I don't know how much I'm gonna go back to this one, if that makes sense. I could watch it again, you know, by the end of the year, but we'll see. And then on June 30th, rounding out the month and sort of hinting at what's to come on the channel, I watched Insidious for the very first time. This is a movie that I was terrified to watch for years because it had been built up by all my friends to be this horrific movie and one of the scariest movies ever made and blah, blah, blah. And so when I was 10 and the movie came out, I was like, okay, I'm just not gonna watch this. And my friends always loved to tease me with like showing me certain jump scare scenes. And so I had always built up Insidious to be horrifying. Well, I finally got over the hump and watched this movie. And I can safely say, it is very spooky, very creepy, very intense, but it's nothing I couldn't handle. It's just a movie at the end of the day. I, I, what I really appreciate about it though is James Wan's direction. The man is a master when it comes to directing horror. I love Saw. Insidious was a great movie, especially in the horror genre. I mean, the way that he builds tension, not only through like just the lack of any score or soundtrack, like just dead silence, but the visual aesthetic of the film, like the color grading, the lighting, it's this guy's like this pale gray look to it. It makes it a for a very eerie feeling when you're watching it. It's got some really effective jump scares in here and a compelling family at the core of it all. Insidious is a, dare I say, great horror film. And I've actually ventured into the series, but you'll have to stay tuned for what I watched in July to see what I think about all that. But hint, I might be watching them all for a movie that might be coming out this upcoming week. So those are all the movies that I watched in the month of June. And I didn't do as much TV watching, but I will talk about what I watched. I watched the first two episodes of Marvel Studios Secret Invasion on Disney+. Plus. I got early access to them, so I watched them back to back. I haven't rewatched the episodes yet. I might do that before episode three comes out this upcoming week. But so far, I really enjoyed it. And I said this in my review of the first two episodes that was spoiler free. It's on pace to possibly go down as the best MCU Disney Plus show. It's not yet, because only, I only seen two episodes, but it's on pace to possibly have that route. It's grittier, it is a spy sort of thriller show. And it reminds me of some of my favorite aspects of Mission Impossible. Not the high stakes action, but like the political side of Mission Impossible with government agencies getting involved, all that. That's what it reminds me of. And there's even some pretty great ch chase scenes so far. Also, Secret Evasion, shocking in my opinion, what they do at the end of episode one. So I'm hooked. Um, I'll be watching the rest of the show for sure. And the last thing I'll talk about in this video is The Bear. I love The Bear season one. I watched it for the first time when it came out last year. And then I rewatched it leading up to season two, which I still haven't started because I rewatched season one again with my girlfriend Cam so we can both watch season two together. So I will be watching The Bear season two. It's probably my most anticipated TV show for the rest of this year, actually. Haven't watched it yet. I know it's been out for a while, like I think a week now. But I will be watching The Bear season two. So again, I'll be talking about that maybe on Patreon, but definitely in what I watched in July. But those are all the movies and TV shows that I checked out in the month of June. Again, follow me on Letterboxd if you wanna see what I'm watching pretty much on a daily basis over there. Check out the Patreon link down below if you wanna see me do a tier list ranking of all the new releases I watched in June. And if you want my ranking of all the Mission Impossible films early, check out my Patreon, that video will be out very soon. But hit that like button, comment down below your favorite movies and shows you watched in the month of June. Subscribe and hit that notification bell. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. <laughs>